Hello again, good evening, and welcome to this edition of Business Live. My name is Emmanuel Abuaji Riafi. In today's edition, as Ghana's Sankofa Jinyame Field in the Tunnel Basin of the West Cape Three Points prepares to deliver first gas in February 2018, Ghana Gas says it will not be able to process gas from the field for thermal generation. Chamber of Petroleum Consumers demands 7% reduction in fuel prices in the country, citing reduction in prices of crude on the world market. And in the construction industry, the global communities Ghana implemented of the Youth Inclusive Entrepreneurial Development Initiative for Employment re-echoes calls for establishment of a regulatory body for the industry. These are the headlines we're working with for the next 25 minutes or so. You can get interactive with us by tweeting at Joy Business GH. You can also go onto Facebook. Our page is Joy Business. And for more business news updates, log on to myjoyonline.com slash business. We'll be right back with the details. Business Live today is brought to you by GCB Bank. So it's a daily business news update for the day. And let's go on to the very first story. The country's Sankofa Jinyame project, uh, based in the tunnel field in the tunnel West Basin Cape Three Points, is on track to deliver first gas in February 2018 to augment thermal power generation. Now, uh, according to Ghana Gas, it will not be able to process gas from Sankofa Jinyame field. In an interview with Joy Business, communications manager Alfred Obami said the processing facility will not be able to handle the volumes of gas from the field. Sankofa has a higher capacity than even our plant, and there's a plan for Sankofa to have its own plant, which even has a higher processing capacity than the uh, travel gas processing plant. You know, the ENI Sankofa project is supposed to have a, its own plant, which will be higher in terms of his ability to process gas than what we have at the moment. So really, their gas will run, need to go through our pipeline. And if it has to go through, there would have to be an enhancement. But I do not think that we have worries here. We have some time for both the development of the field as well as the development of the uh, onshore processing facility. But the projection now is not for the atabo gas processor to handle the gas from Sankofa. Of course, we'll be handling the gas from the Tenfold and the Jubilee Field. So within the industry, the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers is demanding a 7% reduction in fuel prices in the country, citing reduction of prices on the global market as a basis. According to the Chamber, the persistent decline of crude prices on the world market over the past two weeks makes it necessary for a reduction of prices on the local market. Let's get some more from the Secretary, Executive Secretary of the Ghana Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Dan Kanamwa. The Ghanaian, as we speak today, uh, expect some minimum 7% reduction uh, in pump prices. If you recall, uh, two weeks ago when we put out, we needed uh, some 3% uh, reduction uh, the market eventually ended up giving about 2% reduction, mm. uh, which meant that even the 50 levels and uh, the significant reductions that we should have seen uh, wasn't actually seen. Uh, today, as we speak, uh, crude levels uh, on the world market uh, focus around $44. And uh, one will be asking if from 49 there about to 44 uh, doesn't warrant for a significant reduction today, uh, then when again would the Ghanaian get the sort of needed reduction? But in all of this, uh, we agree and know they will probably reduce uh, very soon, but uh, it's becoming a growing phenomenon and uh, 
uh, deregulation where uh, when prices ought to go up uh, within a day or two you would find most OMCs uh, haven't done uh, what they are supposed to but when they have to be the reverse or uh, have to go down you're likely to find that they drag their feet for five six seven days uh, into a pricing window uh, before you see these adjustments reflect at the pump we want to believe that this uh, coming window uh, starting from uh, tomorrow saturday uh, and saturday uh, we are not going to have to wait to uh, for three four days uh, to see the reduction reflect at the pump we think that it has to be immediate it has to be soon and uh, the Ghanaian would have to be given uh, some relief as far as uh, petroleum uh, dynamics and fairness is concerned uh, under the regulation. We believe 7% is actually fair and reflective of what exists uh, currently in the industry. That was Executive Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers. Away from that, the benefits of internet banking in Ghana are yet to be explored by most banks in the country and in Africa as a whole. An ICT expert who is also the executive director of Pen Plus Byte Ghana, Kwame Ahiabenu, is advocating a paperless banking system in the country where the use of the internet and the ICT will serve the major operators in the banking hall. This, he said, will afford flexibility of banking services for customers' convenience. Technology has now improved on a lot of service delivery and processes in Ghana. So paperless banking is now possible. A lot of banks are now able to offer services like going to the ATM, you make a deposit on the ATM, you are able to do transfer on the ATM. So the possibilities are there. But at the same time, a lot of people may not have access to the technology. Like for example, if I'm sitting at home, we'll have a computer with a fast internet. That will enable me to do full service banking. The answer may be no. But we know that in Ghana, we have a lot of people with mobile phones, which enable them to do a lot of things that a computer can do. So the answer to your question is that today, yes, it's possible. However, the change is slow, but it's happening. The internet space is growing but access is limited limited in a sense that when you go outside Accra or major cities internet access become problematic so in a village they also need to have high-speed broadband internet it's not possible even in the cities if you want to watch a full length video on YouTube you may struggle because the cost of watching a video may be very high so yes internet service is improving but the rate of improvement is quite slow so it means that a lot of innovations that can be made possible using the power of the internet is not happening the royal institution of chartered surveyors rics has emphasized the need for the adoption of international standards in the local construction and built industry according to the international professional body in land and property management this should facilitate and boost investment attraction into the country director of global property standards peter bolton king spoke to joy business after a meeting to introduce stakeholders including businesses and government institutions to standards in property measurement and valuation the royal, royal institution of chartered surveyors engagement with stakeholders also marks the beginning of the professional bodies workings in ghana the hub of its operations in west africa as far as um, Sub-Saharan Africa, West Africa is concerned, RICS see this as obviously an increasingly important area and uh, you know, a lot of things that are going on in Ghana shows us the growth potential here and what you're doing here. Now, the problem we have on the international standards side and why we're involved is that if you are expecting international investors, big corporate users to invest in Ghana, then like every other country, they need to have that assurance that they're dealing with uh, transparency as far as the property market is concerned uh, and, uh, and that whole de-risking of the no, business. Okay. So unless you have got that consistency brought about by international standards within the built environment, it's risky. People don't know. Inter outside people don't maybe not know about Ghana. They don't understand whether or not it's a transparent system and how property is measured and that sort of thing. By bringing that consistency with international standards, by de-risking the process, it makes it easier for companies for institutional investors to invest in Ghana. Now an international investor to some extent probably doesn't care which part of the world he invests in. 
Meanwhile, the West Africa Regional Manager for RICS, Benjamin Menu, says the businesses are also, uh, also stand to benefit immensely by adopting international standards in property management. Say there are no national local, st local standards that governments and other entities use. What we are saying is that can we look at really aligning these against international standards? Because really, the investor community, the global market space, are now embracing and using these standards, and we want to introduce this to the marketplace in Ghana. So, really, what it provides for, if you are a government uh, entity or you are. A, a, a user of a property service as a bank or some international investor or developer. If you adopt the International Property Measurement Center or International Valuation Standard, what you're saying is that critical, you're de-risking your process of investment or committing resources to infrastructure development. To your saying you provide, you are transparent in the way and the manner in which you go about measuring this property. You are also saying that you abide by these international sets of standards that are linked to the IFRS, which is the International Financial Reporting Standard in financial reporting. So actually as a bank or as a multinational, if you're able to value your assets very well and report them adequately, it, it contributes to your own assets as a bank year on year. If you rent space as well, you, you commit money to that. You are also using this standard to make sure that you are abiding by, by, by this set of high principles of international standards that, that every, every other institution all over the world as I speak are, are, are using. It's still on Business Live and moving on. Agriculture has been the backbone of the economy over the years, creating jobs for many Ghanaians and thereby contributing immensely to the country's GDP. Now, the sector has, however, lost this attribute to the services sector in recent years as most farmers continue to undertake subsistence production with little emphasis on commercial production. Now, analysts and stakeholders, however, believe the sector's agribusiness holds the key to maximizing the economic benefits of the sector. Now, stick, uh, agribusiness holds the key to maximizing economic benefits of the sector, but how exactly? Sheila Tamaklu has been exploring ahead of the Joy Business Talks on Agribusiness scheduled for next Tuesday, July 19, at the Alisa Hotel here in Accra. In 2009, the contribution of agriculture to GDP stood at 31.9%, falling to 22% in 2013. Blah, 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 blah. Currently, the Ghana Statistical Service puts Agric's contribution to GDP to as low as 12.2%. For the first quarter of 2016, it recorded 4,345.5 million Ghana CD as compared to 1,626.3 million Ghana CD for the same period in 2009. Its contribution though high has recorded some percentage decline while some believe this poor performance is as a result of a lack of modernization others say individual subsectors have not done badly but have only been overtaken by the sectors such as services so we are hoping that the balances will do about 80 containers from here if all goes well that's and that is what we are saying that we create a lot of employment because we have two shifts running the packers basically you see here is rose royce it does five metric tons an hour, so it means for four metric ton, for 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 four hours you have twenty metric tons, which is a full container. For yeah, so for eight hours you, you are doing I mean, two containers. He identifies some challenges crop farmers face. One of our major challenges are fruit flies, and fruit fl flies is regional issue. Do you understand? And we thought that by now. Government should have taken a holistic uh, uh, view in tackling fruit flies as against what we are doing, the farmers themselves are doing on their own. Livestock is one of the important subsectors that have been virtually overlooked. The livestock subsector contributes to the economy in many ways, even though its contribution to the GDP and food intake for the population are relatively low as compared to the crop subsector. The poultry industry is a component of the livestock sector, which has not been given adequate attention over the years. They don't their poultry products. Yet. Francis Hammond is a former CEO of the Ghana Poultry Farmers Association. 
if you talk about poultry let's get to the basic you are talking about they will think uh, chicks which is imported so from the word go you are importing a day old chick which will be far higher in cost to anybody in any of those countries that we are referring to you know once you import it to ghana the unit cost plus other charges you know so you start so definitely by the time no matter how efficient you are the price has already gone up in the past few years successive governments have implemented several policies to boost agriculture these have however yielded limited results a great information and communication service provider isoko thinks that low agri productivity levels are largely as a result of over reliance on the weather we are depending on the rainfall to survive so if there's any change in rainfall there's definitely a change in our productivity which will affect the people in the country in terms of the climate change we only have to make our irrigation facilities viable if our irrigation facilities are down we will not be able to do it so what are some major policies that government has taken to boost and turn around the fortunes of the agriculture sector if you want to take the whole agri sector i always look at it that the challenge is not from one particular person it's not from the government alone it's not from the farmer alone it's not from the bankers alone it's the, the whole chain need to be tackled and if we have to tackle it then the government has to look at which area will create a rippling effect which area will create the, the pool in the in the system that when we tackle this area it will affect the other services but you cannot blame it solely on the government doorstep or solely on the banking doorstep or solely on the production doorstep each and every sector have its challenge and we need to solve them holistically we have to go back and find out what can we do better in ghana to reduce our costs we must invest more into maize production we must invest more into soya production we must invest more into aquaculture if we we are able to do it well and these things are not short-term investments they are long-term investments if successive government thinks agri is a backbone of the country agriculture development bank is basically owned by government what uh, i mean prevents government from recycling their dividend at the end of the year for farmers as a soft loan it is still believed that agriculture remains the best means of alleviating poverty and hunger in ghana therefore government must channel resources into developing the agricultural sector to make it more productive and profitable for the larger economy That was Sheila Tamaklo's report on the state of agriculture in the country. Now, Joy Business, in partnership with Busy, will be holding a discussion on transforming Ghana agribusiness to the rescue. We'll be asking, will the business of agriculture deliver the aspiration of transforming the economy of Ghana? On the panel will be Dr. Alhassan Ahmed Yakubu, Deputy Minister of Food and Agriculture, Salom Brentier of M Pedigree, David Siama, Agro Mindset, Dr. Charles Toto of the CSIR and the Africa Center for Economic Transformation, ASET. Join us at the Aliza Hotel on July 19, 2016. The time is 5 p.m. Let's have a conversation. The Joy Business Busy Talks, empowered by Joy Business and supported by Busy, making good things happen. Let's now take some international business news updates. <music> It's a Thursday evening and it's time for the business agenda, which today focuses on establishing standards within the construction industry. You are welcome to the business agenda. In today's edition, Global Communities Ghana, implementers of the Youth Inclusive Entrepreneurial Development Initiative for Employment, has renewed its call 
for the establishment of a regulatory body for the construction sector. You'd recall there have been a number of building collapses in the sector, largely blamed on the lack of regulation and also poor professional standards in the sector. The Chartered Institute of Building has over the years advocated the establishment of a construction development authority and has even sent proposals to the Ministry of Water Resources, Works and Housing for this to be done. And Global Communities Ghana, the policy and sustainability specialist Maxwell A.J. Ashon thinks it's right time for the regulatory body to be really implemented. Codvet reports that only 3% of construction sector workers are trained formally, are formally trained. So which means that about 97% of them have not been trained. And that affects your skill set. Aside that, if you want the, um, the local construction firm to also develop the capacity, you like have to let your macroeconomy also show. But if I am struggling, if I am struggling to even be paid for contract that I have executed, obviously I won't be able to have that capacity. So if we are really serious about promoting the sector, it is either we enforce, we create that, that enabling environment by getting a regulator for the construction sector. Yeah. That there is a bill before parliament for consideration to be passed into law that is looking at regulating the real estate sector in terms of the buying and everything. I don't know what other impositions are going to come out of that law, whether there are going to be increases in taxes and all those things. All of them will affect the ability of the construction sectors or the local construction sector to also grow. So if you really are committed to ensuring that you grow the local construction sector and mind you if we are able to grow the local construction sector as i said the people who will work on these contracts will be our local people and they will boost local the local economy maxwell aj ashon is a policy and sustainability specialist with the global communities ghana Implement We'll make a date again next Thursday for another interesting edition of Business Agenda. And that's how we wrap up for this evening's edition of Business Life. Thank you very much for your company and joining again for the last edition in the series for the week. My name is Imano Abwaji. Good evening.